afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest Daily Mirror Cost of Living Facebook Live, where each week we bring you all the latest financial updates and money tips. I'm Levi Winchester, I'm the money editor here on the, on the Daily Mirror website, and this week I'm joined by Lynn, Lynn Beatty, also known as Mrs. Mummy Penny. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me again, Levi. Always great to talk Hi, to you. Yeah, always so lovely having you on. Thank you for joining us, Lynn. So this week we are going to be talking about how to keep the cost of your Christmas dinner down. So we've all noticed how things are getting more and more expensive in the supermarkets. The latest data from the ONS, the Office for National Statistics, shows that food price inflation has hit 16.2% in the year to October, which really is a huge, huge jump. But thankfully, there are lots of tips and tricks that you can do to lower your supermarket shop. And it definitely isn't too late to do this in time for Christmas. So just before we get into the fantastic dinner recipe that Lynn has for you, I think it's just worth a quick reminder for anyone out there who is really genuinely stressed about Christmas that you, know, you don't need to spend loads of money to have a really magical day. Set yourself a budget and stick to it because it's just it's really not worth starting January in debt. And I know this is something that you've spoken to, spoken about quite a lot as well, Lynn, about you know, just being realistic about what you can afford this Christmas. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um what I really want to put out there as a message um, in all the interviews I've been doing since October is I'm trying to alleviate the guilt from people. I'm like trying to give people permission that it's OK to do Christmas differently this year. So we're bombarded with, you know, the TV adverts and um, maybe expectations of what um, we're thinking uh, people want us to do or keeping up with the Joneses or whatever. But like, let's just get rid of all of those expectations and let's just think what Christmas is really about, it, it's about spending time with our friends and family, right? So you don't have to spend a lot of money to do that. Um, and yes, we might be having to have difficult conversations with people about not gifting, um, you know, not not buying all the smelly sets and all the stuff that you didn't want anyway. And I think what you'll actually find is the person you're having the conversation with, it's going to be a relief for them that they aren't having to give you a gift as well. So we're saving money sort of all around and just just do things differently this year and don't experience any of the guilt. No, I think absolutely right, Lynn. I think you, you hit the nail on the head there is this horrible sort of social expectation. But I think, you know, just be honest with people, just be upfront, have that conversation. I think, like you said, your loved ones will will really appreciate it as well. And who knows, they might be feeling the exact same kind of worry that you are. So, yeah. 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 We we we're all we're all feeling the same way, aren't we? And you know, our we've we've got what we've been through the last few months with our bills, but what is um, and I don't want to be too sort of negative, Nancy, about all of this, but next year is going to be really tough. So if we can keep the costs down of Christmas and not get into too much debt or not get into any any debt uh, paying for Christmas this year, then that's going to help us out next year when food is going to still carry on going up in price. Energy bills are going to go up again and rent and mortgage goes up. So it's like whatever we can do to cut back now is going to help us in the future. No, absolutely right, Lynn, absolutely. And, you know, like you said, same with food, there is so many things that we could be doing right now if you're worried about your Christmas dinner. So what we're going to do then is let's move on to the fabulous recipe piece that you did for us, where you yeah. managed to do six people for under £25. That was a starter, main, dessert and fizz. And I believe you said the price was lowered to just under £20 without the fizz. So let's go through kind of course by course what was on your menu. Yeah. So firstly, I can't believe I actually achieved this because I sort of um, I, I, sent, I sent you the idea for the article and I, I quite often do this. I'm like, yeah, I can do it for 25 quid, but I hadn't worked it out. So I was it was quite a challenge. Um, so, yes, it's it's a slap up Christmas dinner with all the trimmings, three courses, six people. And actually there was tons of leftovers as well, like my cat. Trev, because I cooked all of this food on Sunday. My cat has had quite a lot of turkey as a little treat. Oh, you put pictures up. Cool. So, um, yeah, my son was so helpful on Sunday. He helped me with everything. So that's just a really nice thing to add to this. That it was a lovely activity to do with with um with him on Sunday. So, um, yes. So the starter 
Um, a great way to save um, a bit of money on your starter is to keep it vegetarian. Uh, so I went for tomato bruschetta. Um, I added a little bit of olives to make it a bit more exciting, um, but that was super cheap. Um, and it was really sort of a zingy and fresh and tasty. It was quite a nice starter to go before quite, you know, a heavy Christmas dinner is a lot of food, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite oh, heavy. Yeah. I love as um, well, we can see the kind of the process pictures. We can see how you were making it there. Then we can see the finished product. It looks really good. Yeah. So I um I literally bought two packets of um Aldi essential cherry tomatoes and I just like halved them, quartered them, and chopped them into little bits. Like, I mean it was it's fiddly. And and what I will say about this dinner is there was quite a lot of prep that went into it because that's how you save the money. Is you buy stuff from you know whole vegetables whole um, and and there's a lot of chopping and stuff involved but i find chopping up vegetables quite calming i quite like the um quite like the routine of just chopping up lots and lots of things and as does my youngest son i was gonna say you your know, youngest helped you didn't you with all the all the vegetable prepping yeah so literally he did all the vegetables you can see his hands in that picture there yeah um, so he peeled potatoes peeled the carrots peeled the parsnips um with the brussels sprouts um i don't boil brussels sprouts i um roast them in the oven along with um so i cut them in half roast them in the oven with a bit of vegetable oil and salt and pepper that makes them taste so much nicer because like boiled brussels sprouts aren't that great um so yeah, so he, he prepped it all, but he also, he made the Yorkshire pudding mix. So again, with Yorkshire's, like make it from scratch. It's so simple, like in a jug, a couple of eggs, which, which goes up to 125 mil. Then I measured another 125 mil of milk. Then I put another 125 sort of level of flour and a bit of salt and pepper. And that is Yorkshire pudding mix. It is that simple in a Pyrex jug. And then you yeah, pop it into the oven um, at a later stage of the cooking process. But um, stuffing, uh, so super cheap way of making stuffing is um, you get the um, packet mix, which is 42p for a packet. And that made 12 stuffing balls. You just add water to it. Um, so he loved like turning all the stuffing into stuffing balls. Um, and that's as opposed to what? It's probably like two quid for a packet of stuffing, you know, already made up balls, isn't it? Um, pigs in blankets. We got frozen um, little sausages and we used the essential streaky bacon to, to wrap it and you know make the pigs in blankets um, cauliflower cheese got some frozen cauliflower cheese so that's a really good tip to try and use as much frozen um, stuff as you can because I actually priced it up it was more expensive to buy the cauliflower and to make the like cheese bechamel sauce to go on top of the cauli so um, yeah, that was that was a nice tip to use frozen vegetables. Um, less waste as well with frozen. We're we're a big fan of frozen in our household. Very much so, mm -hmm. and and it's just really nice, isn't it, to have a lump of cauliflower cheese on your on your roast dinner as well. Um, I roasted the parsnips and the carrots together in the same um, tray, and um, yeah, that was it for vegetables, wasn't it? But what I will say about vegetables, obviously, I bought them last weekend when they were a little bit more expensive, but when we get closer to Christmas and Aldi have put this information out and I'm, I, you'll know about the other supermarkets, but they're all going to copy each other, aren't they? Um, you can get the carrots, parsnips, Brussels and potatoes for 19p a um, packet. So um, it's a great, great money saving thing to Absolute do. Bargain. Absolute bargain. Yeah. And, and they all they all do it. Um, so. So yeah, so that was how I got my. Um, oh, I haven't mentioned the turkey, have I? So with the, the turkey, main, the main bit, the turkey. The main main bit. Bit. Although, like, what I will say about turkey, because I mean, I cooked a small. Um, I mean, that was a small frozen turkey. That is massive. It like, looks massive. It looks like it can easily go around six. And I know you had loads left over as well had loads and loads left over so i've managed to turn it into like i had i had just loads of food left over so i've made like roasted vegetable and turkey soup i've made like a sort of slow cooker turkey thing i i'm very i just sort of chuck things into the slow cooker and let it cook um <laughs> that's my creative mind um and slow cookers obviously we know are very cheap on the energy bills uh, it's a good way to cook food but um yeah loads of leftovers of the turkey and um so that's um that was that was 
the turkey was actually cheaper this year than last year, which was very interesting from Aldi. It was about 10p a kilo less. Um, wow. And I was I was quite surprised by that because I, I did do a lot of comparison of prices this year to prices last year because um, I was expecting everything to have gone up. To be fair with you, turkey was the only thing that went down and we're only talking sort of pennies. But um, vegetable oil had gone up by 80% year on year, like just Aldi basic vegetable oil had gone up by that much money. I was really surprised. And eggs as well, because I needed the eggs for the Yorkshire pudding. Um, they'd gone from 10p each last year to um, 15p each this year. So when we're talking about that um, inflation number that you mentioned, it varies hugely by products. There are certain basic food items which have gone up so much year on year. Absolutely. And it all adds up, doesn't it, when you're buying these ingredients week in, week out, is the little the little changes that soon start to make a real difference to your bill. Yeah, well, you think eggs, like we go through so many eggs in our house because it's it's a really like great nutritious sort of protein heavy breakfast, isn't it? To have before a football game or something. So I always give my boys like scrambled eggs. But when you're talking like 15p per egg, and, and you might use sort of five or six eggs to make a decent portion of scrambled eggs. That's suddenly like quite a lot of money, isn't it? So, um, yeah, it's it's worrying. But so, so yeah, main event was an absolute feast. Loads and loads of food. Obviously, we had gravy as well. Um, and with the gravy, um, I'm not really one to faff with making gravy out of um, carcass and all that kind of stuff. I just use the... Um, the gravy granules and mix with water because it's easy because what i will say about christmas dinner is um and what i put in the article i had to list absolutely everything with um all the cooking times and all the temperatures i had to use my top oven and my bottom oven to make sure that everything was already on time i pre-cooked the turkey in advance um, and then I did all the sort of vegetables and, you know, the stuffing and the pigs in blankets later. And I had a lot of steps, wasn't there, Lynn? Like, there were really a lot of steps. Christmas dinner is, by the time it got to sort of half an hour, 15 minutes before it was ready, I was feeling quite stressed. And I was like to my kids, please get out of the kitchen. Just let me like focus on the, the end stages of, of yeah, getting the Christmas dinner ready. But then it was all ready and it was lovely and it was all like on the table and I managed to get some nice pictures and it didn't go too cold or so I was taking pictures. So let's talk about dessert then, because dessert yeah. looked really good. And then again, your youngest kind of took, took sort of control of the dessert stage. Yeah, he, so he made it in its entirety. So I always thought chocolate mousse was really complicated. I have to hand my hand put my hand up I've never made it before um but um I did a bit of a sort of thinking of you know lots of ideas of cheap dessert recipes and actually there are quite a lot of cheap dessert recipes and um, so other ideas I had was um trifle um cheesecake with sort of basic digestives um you can make quite ch uh, a chocolate yule log um I priced that up as well that's uh, that's actually one pound sixty just under one pound sixty to make a chocolate yule log um but yeah I went for chocolate mousse because I thought it was quite luxurious um and I had like a layer of fruits um in the bottom of it I used frozen fruits um another great money saving tip um, so I've got some nice sort of summer fruit. So you can see in the picture, I've done one glass of just the fruit and then we've done another glass with the mousse on top. So Jack um, made the mousse. So it's um, it's three egg whites. It's some natural yogurt. Um, I used basic, basic Aldi dark chocolate, which was 33p for a packet of like 100 grams of chocolate. It's so cheap. Um, and... Um, yeah that that's pretty much the ingredients of mousse so you have to like whisk up the white the egg whites to get them um at stiff peaks and i, I got him to do that because that took him 10 minutes and he every every minute he was like is it ready yet i'm like no, can you tip it out of the bowl no it's not ready yet um <laughs> so yeah and then he just sort of spooned it on top of the um fruit and then we popped it in the fridge for like an hour and then it turned into a lovely mousse and again that keeps what i will say about the um, starter and the dessert was you can make them in advance so with the um sort of tomatoes for the bruschetta just make that in the bowl and leave that in the bowl and then just pop it on top of the um ciabatta or the panini on the day but again with the chocolate mousse you can make that two or three days in advance it keeps in the fridge for three days so um yeah really simple and really cheap super cheap and super easy like you said Lynn but 
most importantly, the question that we want to know is, did it taste good? It tasted amazing. Uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting it to taste great, to, ta to taste wonderful because the chocolate was essential, bog standard, dark, and it was dark chocolate as well. Oh, it's got a little bit of caster sugar in it as well to sweeten it up. But it was actually really nice. Um, I, um, uh, my youngest ate his, so I mean, that's a testament that he ate it. Uh, another one of my children wasn't very keen. He left it, so I've ended up having a couple of portions. <laughs> and I have to say, I thought the dessert looked beautiful. It all looked absolutely lovely. But what I really like about the, well, all the courses actually, they felt special. They didn't feel cheap or look cheap. They were like, like a chocolate mousse with fruit is a nice dessert. And I mean, look at all that food on the plate. It looks lovely, doesn't it? So I was really happy. Um, I really enjoyed eating it, and and my children did as well, and the cats has very much enjoyed the turkey <laughs> and can't forget Trev the cat <laughs> can't forget Trev, no. <laughs> just to reiterate this was just under 25 pounds for three mm. courses plus your fizz just under 20 pounds without the fizz which is yeah. amazing so how did you how did you come up with your ideas like did you follow a certain recipe online where was the kind of inspiration um so I have over the years of Mrs. Mummy Penny, Mrs. Mummy Penny's 10 years old next year. Wow. Um, I, can't, I can't believe it's been going for 10 years. But um, I always find the cooking sort of challenges or articles I've written for magazines or newspapers, they always do really well. Like people are quite keen to have these ideas. So I've got a stock of ideas in my head. Um, and I've also got um, quite a lot of frugal friends and we sort of share ideas with each other. So, um, yeah, for the starter, um, I spoke I spoke to the girls that work in my team, actually. So we we sort of came up with a few ideas for starters, um, settled on the bruschetta, but particularly because it was vegetarian, um, that it really does cut costs down when you eat veggie rather than meat. Um, and... Um, yeah, when I priced it up originally, I was using like quite big tomatoes. But when I went into the actual shop, I actually worked out that using cherry tomatoes was a lot cheaper. Because, you know, on the um, the shelf edge labels, you've got like cost per 100 grams of, of all different sort of variants of food. So, yeah, I went through all the tomatoes and I literally worked out which was the cheapest one. So that saved me a little bit more on my um, spreadsheet. Um but yeah, and for dessert, actually, um, I spoke to I spoke to a different friend um, and we, we just sort of came up with about 10, 20 different ideas. So I did price up a few of them um, because I knew that most of my 25 pounds was well, I knew most of it was going to go into the turkey, actually. Um, probably I think it was about 10 pounds of the 25 pounds was was sort of six portions worth of turkey. Um, so, yeah, I knew I had to cut it back on other um parts and then also with the well, we haven't come to talk about the booze yet but when i um went into the shop i went into a, a bit of a panic mode that um i couldn't find the five the 4.99 prosecco and i spoke to a member of staff and i'm like i really need 4.99 prosecco to make my my menu work and she was like don't worry why don't you use this sparkling wine instead so i found a really nice sort of 4.99 sparkling wine which um was super nice so yeah it, it was it was quite a lot of work to get it under 25 quid but it just goes to show that with a bit of planning um and yeah making a few things from scratch but fun with your kids it's totally possible and i know you mentioned as well then with the booze that you could make you can make a mimosa or just a little bit of orange juice with what you got yeah 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 so um in all the supermarkets do it but you can get wonky fruit and vegetables so that's always a great tip to save some extra money on your fresh produce but yeah I picked up some not in that picture but I got some um wonky oranges which were like uh, 50p for five or six of them or maybe 60p um yeah and just squeeze that into fresh orange juice and yeah add a little bit of that into your sparkling wine to make some um make a mimosa or just have some fresh orange juice for the kids if you don't drink but as you say, if it, taking out the um, fizz from the equation, it actually makes it less than 20 quid for the meal. So, yeah, it's it's pretty good because you don't have to drink alcohol with, with Christmas dinner, do you? No, so good as well. You managed to get it so cheap. So, yeah, what I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I know you mentioned um, 
I know you mentioned Aldi. Were there any other shops you went to? What was your kind of like thinking when you thought, right, these are the places I'm gonna I'm gonna visit? Um, no, I I just went and did the whole shop at um, Aldi. So I I did research my prices on the website before I went. Um, and was there anything? I had a bit of a panic about the eggs because. I, I thought I'd found eggs cheaper on their website. And then I got to the shop. And as we know, like eggs are in quite short supply at the moment. So I got to the eggs. And I also I shopped early in the morning where I knew, you know, everything would be sort of good availability. But yeah, when I got to the egg section, there was literally only three different types of eggs where normally in a supermarket, there's 10, 15 different types of eggs. So um yeah, I think the eggs did end up costing me a little bit more than I put in my budget. But then there were other sort of surprises I found, like um, I was intending to buy quite a small packet of frozen fruits, um, which, you know, now sits in my freezer. But I was able to buy a bigger packet of frozen fruit, which then bought the cost per 100 grams of fruit right down. So that really helped with um, saving some money. Um and the only other thing which was a little bit annoying, I mean, I've got lots of vegetables that I put on my plate anyway. Um, and I had great, I like to have like a rainbow of colours of vegetable on my plate. But I, I'd originally wanted to include broccoli. Um, but the broccoli, broccoli is actually quite expensive. Um, I think it was working out to be something like 70 or 80p for the sort of flora of broccoli. So I, I just couldn't make it work and I was prioritizing cauliflower cheese over broccoli so I had to remove broccoli from my list and I think that's really important as well to be very open you know if you if you might need to make substitutions to make yeah. that that meal just that little bit cheaper yeah and uh, what I what I always say about substitutions what's really important is um because I'll I'll have a list when I go to my supermarket but the first place I will go in a supermarket is the yellow sticker section That's so I did actually with with my shopping on Saturday I managed to get the potatoes um it was like a 2.5 kilo bag of potatoes but the bag had a hole in it so they gave me a 75% discount off the potatoes. So, um, yeah, watch out for things like that. Get your yellow sticker stuff. And if you maybe need to substitute Brussels sprouts for broccoli, then just, just be prepared to do that because, yeah, it can bring it can bring the prices down. And, yeah, it's, it's always great to get a yellow sticker with lots of money off. Absolutely. Who doesn't love a yellow sticker deal? So what I would, because um, I'm aware we are ever so slightly kind of running out of time, what I'd love to kind of wrap up with is a few kind of general supermarket saving tips. So mm. one that I really love is the downshift challenge. This is where you swap brand labels for supermarket owned brands and you can save roughly 30% on your on the price of your shop if you do this. Is this something that you've ever tried, Lynn? And as a mum, is this is this hard to get the kids on board with? Yeah, no, I've tried this um, with lots of different brands. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but what I will say is when you're in the supermarket, um, think about your eye line. Um, so what supermarkets tend to do is they'll put their premium products in your eye line. So if you look down, that's normally where the cheaper versions of the products are. So let's say it's... Um, to, catch up that's that's one of the contentious issues in our house i have tried to like trade my kids down to non heinz but they just won't do it um they they don't like ketchup that isn't heinz so um yeah i have to sort of go for that middle one but then also keep as i've already mentioned before look at the um special offers on that product you're going to buy and the price per 100 grams or 100 millilitres because sometimes they might have a special offer on a smaller variant of a product that makes it cheaper than if you bought the bigger variant because I would always assume you know you buy the massive bottle of ketchup or the massive jar of chocolate spread and you're gonna it's gonna be a bit cheaper but not always because sometimes there's discounts on smaller versions of products. No absolutely really really valid tip especially the uh the price per gram or you know milliliters is really important to, to keep an eye on that and to do your calculations when you're going through your shop um a couple of things that i find really useful i don't know about you lynn is i always find shopping on uh, an empty stomach really bad i find it makes <laughs> you pick up so much more than you would do normally and another thing i try and do as well is i always try to to plan as much as possible you know write your list you stick to it i find 
preparation is really kind of key when it comes to, to your supermarket shop. I mean, what kind of other sort of quick fire tips would you have for our viewers when it comes to not just their Christmas dinner, but supermarket shopping generally? Yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right. You nailed it. You, you need to sort of go in with a shopping list. But I've got a process of what I go through when I go to the supermarket. So number one, you choose a smaller trolley, get the half size trolley rather than the full size, less space. Um, the first place you go in the supermarket, you completely ignore what they are trying to get you to do. You head straight to the yellow sticker section, get the bits off your list or substitute bits off your list from that section. Next, go to frozen, get your frozen meat, vegetables, fruit. Um, they are just as great quality and in fact, less wastage, as you said. And the products are often frozen at point of source so that they hold on to their nutrients better. Um, then you move to the can section and get what you can from that cheaper can section and then whatever's left on your list you know head to the fresh section and the grocery section to get to get the rest of the bits and pieces um and try to avoid um the sort of power aisle um the the special offer aisle because often i used to work for tesco's right so i know all this with expertise but often the kind of deals that are in those power aisles are um sort of uh, convenience food or um sort of junk type food which probably isn't too much of that on your list um and it's a bit of a false economy sometimes i think the bog off offers because you end up with you know loads of kit kats when you didn't even need kit kats in the first place because they weren't on your list no absolutely some really good tips ellen that like we said won't just help for christmas but kind of all around general supermarket shopping and yeah i think i just you know, before we wrap, before we kind of leave, I just would really like to reiterate again, you know, just don't go over your budget this Christmas, don't mm -hmm. stress. I know this is something that you're very passionate about as well, Lynn, just, you know, stick within your means and you don't have to spend a lot of money this Christmas. Yeah, stick within your means. Like, it's one day or it's like a couple of days. Like, it's just not worth getting into debt over one day. And I think just focus back on, you know, doing crafty stuff with your kids that's free, you know, collecting holly and berries and maybe making a, a table decoration for, for Christmas dinner, um, making Christmas cards with your kids. There's a lot of things that we can cut back on which will save you chunks of money and don't um, don't stress over it. Don't, don't make that Christmas like the supermarket adverts are trying to get you to do. To no, <laughs> absolutely well thank you so so much for joining us again and also for sharing your fantastic christmas recipe with us so that article is live on the mirror website now so please do check it out and hopefully you can get some inspiration from mrs mummy penny and her cost of living tips thank you thank you so much guys we'll be back next week with another cost of living facebook live so i'll see you then